Now that we've gone through all this effort in bringing our EFS configuration under control, let's go back to Jason's computer now and uh, actually go through reconfiguring his encryption settings so that he uses the certificate that we want him to use uh, that supports this data recovery agent we've now created. I'm going to switch computers here back over to Jason's desktop here where Jason is still logged in here on this machine. And what I want to do first is actually bring up a command prompt here so I can update group policy so that this machine gets all the settings, those EFS settings we've configured thus far. With that policy now updated, we can close this window down and bring back up the encryption window that we were taking a look at earlier. Now, if you recall, the first time we went through this with Jason, he generated a self-signed certificate that works for him but won't work for anybody else. This time, however, we can come back and choose the next button, and then instead of using that self-signed certificate, go through creating a new certificate that's associated with the Domains Certification Authority down here at the bottom. I'll choose the next button here, and as you can see, our wizard here has gone about requesting and then being issued the appropriate certificate that Jason can now use. If I click up here under View Certificate, I can see more information about the cert. I have the private key. In this case, it's been issued by an online Enterprise Root CA here on Company DC. Uh, I can see more details about the certificate. Indeed, this is a fully trusted certificate as well. So this cert will work for Jason, but it will also work for me if I have need to recover his information. Let me hit OK here, and rather than Jason actually backing up the certificate, let's assume that he decides not to back up his cert. In fact, he's not done so and then subsequently lost access to his certificate. However, thankfully, before losing that certificate, he went here to the next page in the wizard where he updated his previously encrypted files with the certificate he just enrolled for. So if I come here under folders and go down to the C drive here, under Jason's important stuff are those couple of files or that one file that we went about encrypting with that self-signed certificate. This will allow us to automatically re-encrypt that content with this new CA-issued certificate. I'll choose Next down here, and then the encrypted files have now been updated. Now I'll choose Close. So we now have a file that's been encrypted with the appropriate certificate. And in fact, if I come back here to that file and take a look at Properties, and then go under Advanced, I can now see more information, more details about the encryption of this file. You'll notice here that Jason Helmick is the user who can access the file. He could potentially add another person if he wanted to, if that certificate were available on this machine. Also down here are the recovery certificates that can be used to decrypt the file should Jason, as he's already done, lose his original certificate. Those include the administrator, the domain administrator, as well as my account, gshields at company.pri. So let's just prove that this indeed works by coming down here, choosing OK, OK again, and then logging out as Jason and logging in as myself. Now, I've already exported out the, the recovery certificate from that console, the, the CA console over on DC. In addition to exporting it, I've copied it over here to this computer, my desktop. So you can see a copy of this data recovery agent certificate that I exported out and copied over here to this location. You'll notice that in order for me to make use of it, I need to then import in the certificate onto this local machine. That certificate needs to be imported into my current user location. So I'll choose that and select Next down here. Identify the certificate file indeed that I want to import. Here's Next again. Type in my original password that I used to encrypt the certificate. Choose Next again. And then place the certificate in the personal store. This personal store right here is where the DRA needs to be located. If I choose Next again and then to finish, that goes through the process of importing in my data recovery agent, that EFS decryption certificate, here onto this local machine, Jason's computer. Let me click OK now, and then bring back up the little folder that we were looking to decrypt while ago. Now remember, the last time we attempted to do this, we were not able to access the content or decrypt that content because, well, there was no way with a self-signed certificate. In this case, however, I can come up here, right-click on this XLS file, choose Properties again, back under it Advanced, and choose to decrypt the contents with that Data Recovery Agent certificate. If I choose OK and OK, that will go about decrypting the file and making it again available for JSON.